I'm Scarlett Johansson, and these are the highlights of my career. What can I get you? Um, I'm not sure. Um... For relaxing times, make it Suntory time. I started working when I was eight years old. I had met Sophia before. She, I remember her telling, she was a big fan of a film I did when I was 10 called Manny and Lowe. That I'd rather be with Lowe any day. She's my sister, and she's good people. And then a few years later, I'd met her for the Virgin Suicides for something. I, I don't remember which part it was or if I did a reading for her. And so it wasn't, I hadn't, hadn't heard from Sophia in a few years. I was 17 and took a meeting with her about something that she was writing and it turned out to be lost in translation and she was in the middle of writing it. I think I committed to the project before the script was finished um, based on the fact that I was working opposite Bill Murray and I was such an enormous fan of his. How long have you been married? Oh, thank you. Mm. Two years? 25 long ones. Mm. You're probably just uh, having a midlife crisis. Did you buy a Porsche yet? The shoot was really short. It was only like 26 days or something like that. So we shot in t really intensely for that time. I was also 17 years old and I was in Tokyo. My mom came with me. Um, thankfully, because, you know, it was kind of a isolating feeling. We were working weird hours and working a lot, and it kind of felt transient in that, in that space, that headspace uh, that the character Charlotte is in a little bit, where my life was kind of in between two places, and I was kind of like a girl woman. I, I thought it seemed like an, an adventurous um, project. That's how that happened. That's how it started. I'm not a baby. I know a lot more than people think I know. Beatrice says to be a woman, but yes. yeah, why did she be a woman? I never imagined when we were doing A View from the Bridge that I, I never really thought about the Tonys because I, had, I had, had never had an experience on Broadway before. I hadn't done theater since I was like a kid. And I was just learning so much really on the stage every night. It was such an incredibly intense experience. The work was really hard and really rewarding and it was very, very exciting every night. I never knew what was gonna happen. And, um, you know, I was working against Liev Schreiber who was is such a powerful actor. Just being able to spend my nights, you know, with Michael and Liev and, you know, catch up and talk about what happened on the stage that night and Greg Mosher, Mosher directing it. I felt so satisfied creatively making that, uh, doing that play. And so, you know, of course, I felt very emotional at the Tonys because I, the whole thing was so unexpected, it, but it was, it was um, like just a treasure. Gee, yeah. I'm, I'm all mixed up. You ever boxed before? I have, yes. Or like a tie bow, booty boot camp, crunch, something like that? <clears throat> Iron Man 2 was the first time I'd ever had to combat train. and It was grueling. I mean, I found out that I got the role five weeks before we started shooting. And so I just had to transform in those five weeks. And so it was a, it was a pretty intense time. Rule number one, never take your eye off your opponent. Oh. <laughs> oh my God! <laughs> It's actually been such a gift for me because I, I was probably I know, maybe 23 or 24 at the time and it actually gave me this life of physical acumen I would probably never have had otherwise and I, I learned uh, the base of a lot of um, you know different martial arts and how to be sort of a very amateur stunt woman. Not that I would ever take the credit away from the incredible stunt women that have doubled me, including Heidi Moneymaker, who does all the, that's her real name, who does all, has done a lot of Black Widow stuff with me. Yes, yeah, I learned, learned so much from her during that experience. I really learned how to do, I mean, how to throw a punch, how to hold a weapon, and you know, all kinds of stuff like that. <laughs> Pretty, what is that? I'm trying to write a piece of music that's about what it feels like to be on the beach with you right now. When I heard 
from my agent that Spike needed, you know, was looking for a voice actor. And I remember my agent saying, oh, you know, it's a couple of days of work on his new film. And I thought, all right, you know, he's like, do you want to kind of go in and, and read with him a little bit? And okay, you know, I'll, uh, I, I like to do voice work anyway. You know, I, I've always liked that um, element of, of acting. And uh, well, first I read the script and I remember I called my agent and I said, I think this is pretty extensive. This seems like more than a couple of days of work. But, you know, who knows? I, I didn't know anything about the, the project and maybe Spike had something else in mind. And so I went down downtown to meet with him in his apartment and uh, we started kind of pulling apart the script and, um, and recording all of these pieces. And I think we were together for like eight hours or something like that. And I thought, God, this is like really a lot of, of work. I, I didn't even realize I was auditioning. I didn't know anything really about it. We're at the end of it, Spike said, you know, I think we should, thank you so much. We, we, we should keep kind of doing this. And I thought, I think this is like a regular full job. Um, <laughs> but it was so vague. I guess he was kind of filling it out. And I think eventually he admitted to me I was like the last actor he auditioned. I guess it was an audition. There was a lot of issues with the, with the character and her, her story and her evolution um, in, as, as Spike was kind of in post, was, was finding that the relationship between these two characters was shifting as he was putting it together. And the character kind of needed to be flushed out as a, almost as a whole, I, I'd say person, even though she's an AI, but it, it, she needed to feel like this full dimensional character, um, you know, that, that had all this, that had lived this whole full life. of your fifth time hosting, we have a very special five-timers jacket just for you. Ooh. I think the most challenging part of hosting SNL really is the stamina that, that it requires uh, because the, that week of work is so intense between whatever pieces you have to learn, whether it's a song or doing like a digital short or whatever other kind of pre-tape you have to do, fittings, promo stuff, all. It, 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 the monologue, it's so much work for the host and you're pulled in every different direction and everyone needs you all the time. That is the most challenging thing. It's just the stamina required to actually host the show. But it's probably like one of the singular most rewarding experiences I've had in my career because when the show is good, it, it, the, the vibe, like the buzz that everybody's um, feeling afterward is pretty exciting, it's, it's, it's really fun. And also because you get to work with all these fantastic performers and comedians, when you're having a great show, they're also having a great show. You know, it's just a, it's a wonderful collaborative feeling. Where's the new girl? Sorry, here. Are you here to do your laundry? Here to see a friend. Clearly your friend is fine. I'm really proud of Endgame. It was so ambitious. I felt it really strongly delivered. I felt it was satisfying. Actually, I felt like Endgame elevated the genre in a lot of ways, and it actually allowed all of us as characters to have great dramatic moments where you don't normally have that much room in those genre movies because they're so plot-driven. But this one, we could actually, it was actually felt quite character-driven. I felt very, emotional when I watched it, but also really proud of it. Let me go. No. Please, no. Someday you'll meet someone special. Why does everyone keep telling me that? Who else tells you that? I think what's really exciting about Jojo Rabbit is it's it's just very different. It looks different. The, the story is so original and, and refreshing. You know, it's it, it when I read that script, it was this perfect little gem. It was such a beautiful, perfect script. It was emotional. I like, cried, and I just found it so special. Taika is obviously a you know wellspring of creative energy. He's an amazing comedian. He's an incredible writer. He's a fantastic dramatic actor and he understands all those many facets of, of uh, you know, 
performance of a story and the value of them. He's a kind of a mad scientist. He'll come up on the moment with these crazy speeches and dialogue and suggestions. And, you know, he's got so much sort of frenetic creative energy um, that it's, it's intoxicating. Jojo Rabbit is not like any one thing. It's, it's super dynamic. The most exciting thing to me is that when movies like that are able to get made the way they're supposed to, they look like they're supposed to, they're given attention and time and money and they come out and people will actually respond to them. It's exciting because it, 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 it shows you that you can actually still make stuff like that, that there's still a place for movies um, in the theater um, that people will go and see and that, and that you can tell unique stories and, and people, it's good for everybody when those movies do well and strike a chord. The response has been just really wonderful. It's a stupid idea. You're stupid. What I love about Nicole. Loving you. She's a great dancer. Infectious. I think marriage story is definitely, you know, there's a lot of, there's a lot of complex emotional the relationship between the two characters is complicated, like any relationship that's meaningful and, you know, there's 10 years of history and there's a lot of different kinds of feelings all happening at the same time, which is not to say that it was all super heavy. While it was exhausting and the days were long because Noah is also very, is relentless in his search for every, you know, possibility and exhausting every kind of angle of any given scene. Because of that, because you had all this sort of room to spread out, it actually felt really liberating, um, like kind of light in a way, even though the material is heavy. Um, it's also kind of playful. I think as an actor, you, you feel invigorated by um, stuff that's working and stuff that feels real and complicated and surprising. It may seem that you would carry around this kind of weight while you're doing heavy dramatic lifting like that, but in fact it's kind of like going to the gym and lifting a heavy weight and then you feel this kind of rush of endorphin afterward, you know, and you feel like light and fit and great. We just wrapped Black Widow like two weeks ago or something like that, so it's very fresh in my mind and I don't have a total perspective on it yet, but um, it's a film about, um, about self forgiveness and it's a film about uh, about family. I think in life we sort of come of age many times in your life and you have these kind of moments where you're kind of in a transitional phase and then you move sort of beyond it and I think in the Black Widow standalone film I think the character is that when we find her is in a moment of, of, of real crisis and throughout the film by facing herself um, in, in a lot of ways and all the things that make her her. Um, she actually kind of comes through that, that crisis on the other side and is able to sort of reset into a space where she's a more grounded, self-possessed person. Um, so that's her journey. Well, I hope anyway.